serious question which one of these two are you looking at more the lady or the man now in ancient greece they actually all looked at the man the man with muscles now they actually did this because they found the male body to be far more important than the female's body and ignore the fact that this guy is about 12 foot tall compared to normal humans that's only because he was an anarchy god oh that's funny isn't it and i have to put that little thing there because uh, it seems like it was a cold day when this <laughs> pose was taken and i will get this removed if i don't but just showing you here how they adored the uh, male body compared to the female where they seem to cover them up mostly so there you go in ancient greece if you had muscles you would have been a celebrity the rock would have done very well in ancient greece i mentioned in my last video that if you was in ancient greece and had muscles then you would be worshipped now part of that would be men oiling you up if so if you had muscles you would have men doing the oiling and then you would walk down the street naked um, and that was a sign a good sign that you were a almost like a hero to the people even if it was a cold day you would be worshipped as you walked down naked because you had muscles in ancient Greece they did actually have dumbbells as well as other apparatus that they would use to lift repeatedly to be able to get those muscles. The reason why the Anunnaki didn't really have muscles even though they were well built is because in my opinion it was the demigods, the younger ones, the sons of the Anunnaki that found fame and fortune in having muscles compared to their fathers who were now old. I thought I'd read out uh, Hesiod's account of Zeus in ancient Greek times. Now, if you take this as prior, the, what I'm about to read as prior to ancient Greece times, in other words, it happened in Mesopotamian times, then I think it makes a lot more sense. In other words, in Greek times, they were writing about stuff that happened back even further than the Greek times. Okay, here we go. Now, all the gods were divided through strife. So before the flood, yes, there were war in factions, as we know especially with uh, Marduk. <clears throat> for every time, uh, sorry, for at that very time, Zeus, who thunders on high, was meditating marvellous deeds, even to mingle storm and tempest over the boundless earth, could that be the flood, and already was hastening to make the utter end of the race of mortal men, e.g. the flood. Now, if you go back to um, where it says meditating, we know that in the ancient Sumerian text, it talks about um, Enlil, which is Zeus, having a dream and seeing Gauzu tell him what's going to happen. So is this meditation actually talking about that, uh, knowing that the utter end of mortal man? And then it goes on, declaring that he would destroy the lives of the demigods. Now, bearing in mind, demigods would have also been the Nephilim. So if you go along with the conclusion that uh, the, the gods, Anunnaki, had relationships with humans and then had children with those, some of those, not all of them, some of them become Nephilim, uh, in other words, giants, compared to the other offspring that they had. But all of them would have been classed as demigods in ancient Greece. Anyone that was, even the Nephilim would have been demigods. Uh, that the children of gods should not mate with wretched mortals in other words is that what i just said seeing their fate with their own eyes but that blessed gods henceforth even as for time in other words being told in advance which is what i was just talking about uh, should have their living and their habitations apart from men but those who were born of mortals and of mankind very verily zeus laid toil and sorrow upon sorrow so basically i think this is talking about something that happened in ancient times uh, what do you think 
How am I doing so far on persuading you that the Anunnaki aliens were in fact the same 12 Greek gods and in fact Roman gods when I get to Roman times? Now, the pine cones were a symbol of fertility by Romans, Greeks, Assyrians and Christians, but what they don't mention here is the Anunnaki. And it also says that uh, the, they're associated with the third eye enlightenment and the pineal gland. Now, the ancient Greeks did actually carry these pine cone type things around with them. Um, but did the Anunnaki? Absolutely. The Anunnaki have been carved with them many a time. So when I say that the Anunnaki were first, and, you know, why would the Greek gods just so happen not only to look like the Anunnaki, but also have the same type of pine cones? It's just too much of a coincidence now, isn't it? Or am I being stupid? <laughs>